All right, so when we last left off with Inuyasha, he had to team up with Koga in order to face off against, well, the new offsprings of Naraku, known as Kageromaru and Juromaru. And the two keep getting each other's way. By the two, I mean Inuyasha and Koga, mainly because, well, Koga is a little selfish bitch majority of the time. Now, it takes an outside interference, that being of Sango and Moroku, in order for them to come out and kind of victory against these creatures. You see, Sango still has some poison left from her exterminator days, and decides to put the poison down on the tip of Moroku's staff, then, in, then basically uh, penetrating the staff through the earth, that way the earth would become some poisoned, and it would affect uh, Kag Kagero Maru, because, because Kagero Maru, what he does is that he attacks from underground. Burns himself down there, and just kind of attacks, then, f then flees back into the underground. And so that has been basically catching both Inuyasha and Koga off, off guard. But after that, um, Kagero Maru pretty much becomes poisoned and goes right back inside of Juromaru's body. And so Juromaru, who has been uh, pretty much fighting against Koga, rushes Koga straight up, beelines him, or heads out of the beeline towards him, and if it wasn't for Inuyasha, using the Wind Scar, Koga would have gotten fucked up very badly. Because as Juromaru was heading straight for Koga for his attack, you see, Kageromaru was going to leap out of Juromaru's chest at that last pristine moment and slice and dice himself up some fucking puppy chow. And so, you no, know, Inuyasha basically uh, gets them to come out as victors, but Koga doesn't even thank him for that. He just fucking belittles him. And then, before leaving, basically tells Kagome, Hey, if you're ever in trouble, I'm here, baby. Yeah. And just fucking just bounces. So, once again, fuck Koga. Koga is a piece of shit. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather keep Shippo in the story than Koga. There. Shippo's better than Koga. Even though Shippo's fucking useless. A lot of the times. This part kind of was useful, I guess, in a sense. All right, so a large majority of this volume is basically uh, Inuyasha still has feelings for Kikyo, but those feelings make Kagome sad. That's pretty much what it is. Oh, 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 and a new twist there, okay? Onigumo, the, ori the original human that... Naraku comes from, he also has feelings for Kikyo. And thus, that's why Naraku made a gigantic uh, fucking spirit devouring, I don't know what we call it, fish? No, serpent. Fish serpent. There, fuck it. Created that damn thing, okay? And was pretty much taking all the dead souls away from Kikyo, because Kikyo lives off of dead souls. And the minute that she couldn't get any more dead souls, well, those fucking, well, her life expectancy almost went to an end. But of course, Inuyasha came to save the day, and killed the thing, and Kikyo is now all fine, and he basically promised her, oh, I'll protect you till the end of time. And it's like, okay, so first you're getting jealous over uh, Koga possibly having feelings for Kagome, and now you're also getting jealous for uh, Onigumo, aka Naraku, having feelings for Kikyo. Huh? I'm, I'm sorry, that's kind, of, that's kind of fucking weird there. And of course, you know, Kikyo and Naraku have another exchange of words with each other. And it's more or less of, you know, I'm gonna I'm going to end up destroying you sooner or later, 
no, you're not, blah, 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 blah. And this conflict actually leads to the ca to uh, the castle that Naraku had been occupying to get destroyed. Or at least I believe that's what it was. And before the castle ends up being destroyed, uh, Kohaku, well, is kind of released. But it seems as if Naraku wants to basically kill off Kohaku once and for all. Because Kohaku has inevitably uh, done what Naraku had wanted him to do anyways. So he's just a worthless um, dead soldier for Naraku's army at this point. And so Kohaku ends up being reunited with Sango and all the rest of them. And Kohaku has no memory of, of anything that transpired before in, in the past. He has no memory of the time before he died or of the events that had happened when he was under Nanaku's mind control. When he had killed uh, their, him and Sango's father and also their friends. So none of that Kohaku actually remembers. But who fucking cares about any of this shit because here comes Kagura and here comes the Naraku posse to <laughs> ah, to end Kohaku's new life because the only thing keeping Kohaku alive is a Shikan jewel fragment that's embedded into the boy's back and that is basically Inuyasha volume 18 in a nutshell I really got nothing to really talk about with this volume because I don't I didn't feel there was any information you know like this is probably the second time I think that we we've had a Inuyasha Sasuke for Kikyo but then Kogome is like oh god I'm sad but then she's like oh no I actually love him then they talk and Kogome was like, wait, I realize that because you love Kikyo, you also love me too, because we're basically the same fucking person. It's like, what, wait, what? Um, you're not the same person. Just because you share the same fucking soul doesn't mean you're the same fucking person. Like, what the fuck? It's just, it's just stupid. And just that whole part of the volume, I was just like, uh, Why? Why is this in here? This is nothing for the fucking story at all. And probably the only thing that was different was that Kagome, without actually telling Inuyasha, basically confesses her love for him, but not telling him directly. Well, she tells the tree that Inuyasha was impaled onto in her timeline that she's in love with Inuyasha, but she never fucking tells him directly. Never. Kind of like how Inuyasha can seem like he's like all day every day can tell Kikyo how much he cares for her, how much he wants to be there for her, that she can't design the worry and shit, but yet he can't come out with his true feelings when it comes to Kagome. What? It makes no fucking sense. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. But that was, that was my only uh, complaint about the volume. I did, however, like the whole, uh, like, Naraku couldn't bring himself to fully kill Kikyo because of Onigumo's heart. I did like that aspect because, as we know, Naraku technically, like Inuyasha, is a, uh, is a half-breed. He's half-yokai, half-human. And that right there, Onigumo's fucking love shows that Naraku still has some kind of a sense of humanity left in him. So I wonder if that is going to end up biting Naraku in the ass at some point in time. Oh yeah, also there was another uh, um, offspring of Naraku that, developed, that debuted in this volume and was killed in no less than I think fucking five panels by Kikyo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit was fucking funny. I'm sorry. All right, so what do you guys think of Inuyasha Volume 18? Let me know in the comments down below. 
Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you'd be so kind to give this video a thumbs up, that way the YouTube algorithm will know that my shit's worth watching. Also, make sure, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification icon. That way, oh yeah, hit that notification icon and make sure the bell is ringing. That way you will know when I put out another video. If you want to follow me on any kind of social media platform, well, wait for the credits after I say goodbye.